bowel disorders. And they can come from that prescribed medication that you take, right? And what's there, and what, do people have a way to get around stuff? I don't think that we're gonna do it, but you know what? How many of you drink your sanitizer, your hand sanitizer? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Put salt on it, the alcohol rises to the top, and then you drink that. But then you're not 17 and 16 and 15, or somebody's been on the streets and looking for something like that. Oh, what about sterno? You warm it up so it's liquid, you pour it through bread, and then you drink what comes out the other side after you squeeze it. You get drunk. Night train, it's wine that a grape has never seen. <laughs> and a variety of other things that we put in our body. It's, it's about being mindful of what we do to ourselves for whatever reason. If you find yourself focusing on that, you owe yourself a time to contemplate that, to understand that. You don't want to wind up splashing around in that big river in Egypt. Denial. Don't even know I am lying. <laughs> I did that. Doesn't work. There's change. Earlier is better. Recognizing what our own capacities are moving forward. I've been clean 21 years. I became a program coordinator. I wrote an 18-month program in Timon's Court for sentence offender drug programs. Uh, went to Socorro as a program manager there for a while. I understand the process. I've been teaching chemical dependency courses at ELAC since 03 for people who want to be counselors, right? And worked here. It affects anybody. It doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, who your mama is, what kind of degrees you have, what your daddy did for a living, it will kill anybody. It's about us understanding what our obligation to ourselves is. If the question ever arises, you know, you see this cell phone right here? It's anonymous. It's mine. You want to talk about yourself or somebody you love? If you have a question, call me. It ain't going no further than that because I don't know anybody anything. Just I like what I have. If somebody has a question, I like to share that because it was good for me. It's been good for my family. And those things I've learned along the way, it, does, it affects anyone. Take a look at the stats with regard to this profession and how they are affected by it because of the pressures, the image, the things that you have to do. I used to do lines in the bathroom, right? I used to sit in the parking lot and drink a Heineken before hitting the courtroom. And one day Bob said, uh, Jimmy, I gotta talk to you. <laughs> It was one of the things that sat me on my butt and got me to take a look, a real look, a real look at what was going on. And when I had nowhere to go, it was Marcus Tucker in this building that says, what are you doing here? I said, what do you mean? I got cases on. He said, no, you don't. You've been disbarred. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went home. But that's how bad I was. I mean, how could this happen? I'm a smart dude. <laughs> you know. I've gotten loaded on, I have set foot on uh, five continents of the world, right? I only need two more, Australia and Antarctica. I'm gonna wait till Antarctica floats by. <laughs> and if, uh, if Australia upends itself and floats over, I can wait till it gets here too. And guess what? You don't have to, you can get loaded anywhere in the world. You know what you gotta do? In all of them, you go like this. <laughs> and it's on. And then you get this one, and then meet me outside, and it's on. You don't have to know the language. I've gotten loaded in languages I don't even speak, right? But the point is we have that capacity, and that disease, once it grabs us, is not gonna let go. And it's up to us to make a difference for ourselves, and we seek out help, we seek out, take, take time. Ask if, if, you, if it has occurred to you one time or another, I used to sit in my bathroom with the lights out and cry, and cry and cry because I couldn't stop. And then I'd get up the next morning and say, okay, fool, you got it out of you, let's go. Let's take care of business. And I was cool until next time. Shit, I quit every, I could quit whenever I want to. I quit every year from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday, nothing. <coughs> 40 days and 40 nights of clean living. Of course, I made up for it the other 325, right? But that wasn't quitting. That was a breather, but it wasn't quitting and it didn't work until Someone showed me how I needed to do that and how the efforts were gonna be mine, no one else's. They didn't give me my clean time. They didn't give me uh, recovery. They showed me how I could recover. And that I had to learn how to make decisions for myself again. 
And that's exactly what happens in this context. And I keep doing that. My life has changed. I make decisions. I don't run from anything. <coughs> right? I stand my ground. I have the drug addiction, the remember PTSD? All of that was my self-medication of those things that I went through in, on June 6, 1969 in Vietnam. That's what it was all about. And it wasn't until the last three years that I began going to psychotherapeutic intervention. You know, this is another organ of the body that requires attention sometimes. And if you have difficulty, you need to talk to somebody about that. There's no weakness in understanding that we have a body that works in all its aspects. It's about dealing with those issues, the physical ones, the psychological and emotional ones, and seeking help and reaching out. And that's what I did. And so I've been at PTSD counseling for the last two years. I sit in a room with guys that were boots on the ground at the same time I was. And it, makes, it changes you. I never had very, I had a lot of friendships, but everybody was this far away. Right? Everybody was this far away. I didn't want to be vulnerable. I'd do anything in the world for you because I had the capacity to do that. I couldn't do anything for myself and I wasn't going to let you do anything for me because I was not weak and I was not going to die. How weird. But that was the translation. And so we need to treat those sort of things, not just the symptom, which was the drug abuse, but the underlying psychological and emotional difficulties that I had, that I had to come to face with, with professionals that could help me with that. And it's about reaching out for help. And that's what I'm going to do. Have I talked too much? Oh, no. So, um, you know, that's where we go with this sort of stuff. And uh, there's more and more coming out. I like this one. Oh, if those of you that want to stop smoking cigarettes, they have Chantix. Take it. But if you feel like killing yourself or someone else, please <laughs> call your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Side effects are looming. Not every pill has a is, a, is a dream come true. We have to take a look at that. How many, oh, you get the Sydney newspaper still? No? <clears throat> the parade section where it has some medication that's there. You turn the page and a little tiny writing, all the side effects, negative implications, and all of that stuff that's on there. My God, why bother taking it? I use methylatum, Aleve, um, and that's it, and vitamins. I take one, uh, one medication for my stomach wounds, and that's it, and that's it. I have high cholesterol, sometimes it's like this. So. But as a point, I, I go to doctors, I go see people, I stay in touch with what I do. I have, um, I'm close to what I need, where the way has been shown for me to stay clean. I don't do it by myself. I, when the lights go out, yes, I'm the one that's responsible. Right? I'm the one that's there. I make decisions and my actions are my own. What I've learned to do is do the right thing because it's the right thing to do even when nobody's looking. And getting away with it don't count. And that's what I have to look like. And that's what I do for myself. And that's it. But I've learned those things. I've given, been given a chance to grow. My little brother, he stopped using heroin and alcohol at age 39, he's dead. I like my way better, right? It doesn't care. He didn't hear what I heard and he couldn't do what I did and that's unfortunate. But we can't pick and choose with regards to who's gonna get it who isn't, but I take care of me and I serve, I don't show people, I don't help people do it. I'm number one, try to be an example to myself that holds me accountable. And the other was I have a resource. In my neighborhood, I'm a resource. And, and people know that I know about this stuff, and I know where to point the finger and send you so that you can get help yourself, but you have to get the help yourself. You know? And so my number is there for anybody that needs it. And you know, we go with that. Um, I'm going to want me to open it up for questions. Do you have any questions? No, you want to run? I am who I'm supposed to be in terms of being a father. I'm the mother I always really wanted, the dad I never had. And those things have come afterwards once I settled with an issue that was an obstacle to me leading a, a life. Right? Um, parenting, it's all, you know, 
parent, kids don't come with, do they come with batteries and instructions? <coughs> no, they smell funny and they're loud, right? <coughs> but it's a learning process. And so I had to learn some things uh, and I've learned those things. But I learned to listen to what they had to say. And there are circumstances and guided circumstances. You're talking about can children be placed in a, in a, in a recovery system? Yes, and it's more, it's more formidable for the person who's in treatment to have their children there that's motivating, and they get to interact, and they get to be shown how to manage situations as they come up. Very successful with regard to women, especially coming back. We have more services for women. I don't think they consider that into the parents yet, but uh, <laughs> women have a lot more services, and that's a good thing. And they move towards, they move towards that, and that is a, a very viable source. Uh, it was first thought of about 10 years ago. And they began processing that and, and funding that. So it's, it's a good situation. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone back to watching uh, Jeopardy and Will of Fortune, the killer movie show. Okay. Everything else is like too much. Work. Um, there's, there's stuff to work. Um, just so you know, uh, how long did it take you to prepare for the bar? And don't say a few months, because you probably did about three or four years of school before that, right? <laughs> I took a run at the bar not too long ago, but it's been 30 years. It's a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm trying to do is get a scholarship to go back to law school. <laughs> no, um, and I'm okay with where I am. I know that that's going to be a venture and an effort that's going to take more than I was able to, to put through, but I wanted to see what it was like, and I did that a few years ago. Um, I think I'm as effective in my life as I ever was when I was practicing. Um, and too bad uh, that that happened, but so good it did happen, because my life has changed and I'm different. So I'm cool with it. And I stayed that way. I'm all right. And I love dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got some Hagen Dazs dark chocolate ice cream bars with pomegranate inside. Stay away from my market. I, <laughs> I have different other things that I do, and I enjoy stuff. I enjoy being alive. I enjoy being with my children, with my grandchildren. I'm going to my grandson's graduation. Now, my mother and father were in World War II. I was in Vietnam. My son was in Iraq. And my grandson wants to join the service and going to law enforcement later on. I don't want him to be boots on the ground. But after four generations before him, how do I say no? I can't. He's going to do what he's going to do, make the decision, and I'll support him. And we'll see if we get that one right. He really messes me. My son got ordered to Iraq. I said, you stay here, I'll go for you. Yeah, good enough. That's too old. And, you know, it's uh, the, the middle granddaughter's going to start high school. She plays baseball in Chino. And the baby says, how come I'm not graduating? You'll have your day. She's eight. <laughs> <laughs> She's the pushing one, right? But um, I'm a part of their life. And whereas it wasn't like before. I wasn't, I'm not always at the office. And they don't have to drive me home. When they don't even, and they're not even old enough to, they look like low riders. They were so small. I was just my son, but, uh, you know, I'm glad that they were able to make this decision. After I was 10 years clean, they said to me, Dad, because every year they give me a cake, an empire, and we go to dinner afterwards, and they said, you know what, if you tell us you're sorry one more time, we're going to beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what has happened is it was a significant change in my life, right? I talk about this stuff, but I hold myself accountable for the things that I do. And my life has changed. They recognize it. I'm not that person. They don't even remember who that was like. They know it wasn't good, but they know it hasn't been that way in the last 20 years. And for most of their life, we're going like right now. So, you know, I'm glad for that. There are resources. There are resources for us. And do we have to meet challenges sometimes? Yeah, we do. And if you need help, call me. Stop me. Talk to me for yourself or someone else. That's your clients. I have to get an action request. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's been like for me. And I don't know. I, any questions? I, Thank you, Jimmy.
Don't forget to sign in. The evaluation. I know where you park your cars. <laughs> and then uh, the, the certificates are going to start. Oh, uh, yeah. I